Yeah, thanks, uh, Pankaj. And uh, thanks to the organizers for the opportunity to speak. Uh, so I'm going to talk uh, about a problem, in fact, solution of a problem which uh, Roman had almost posed in the problem session. Uh, <laughs> so, so it's uh, whatever I'm going to say is uh, joint work with uh, Keshaw from IIT Bombay, Kevin Kwan from UCL, uh, Joseph Luang from Rutgers, Jinxian Li and Matt Yan. So you can see a lot of people from almost all over the world. <laughs> So this, sorry? This one? Ah, okay. So I should be somewhere here. <laughs> uh, uh, so this project uh, started uh, uh, during an AIM workshop on Delta symbols last year, uh, October 2023. And uh, we had uh, a modest goal. Uh, where we wanted to have a level aspects of convexity on uh, just for GL to L functions using a delta symbol approach. So already we have uh, many results uh, for, for such uh, L, L values, uh, but uh, unfortunately we were not able to <coughs> uh, to get a genuine uh, level aspect of convexity for GL2 using the delta symbol approach. So <coughs> in this talk, I will talk about that. And in fact, uh, we end up uh, proving something more. So let's get started. Uh, let's start F to be uh, a hecke uh, new form uh, of uh, uh, level P, and uh, for most of the time I will be taking P to be prime, but uh, in the introduction, in, you know, for the first few minutes, uh, it can be any general though. And uh, it has central character. Chi. Uh, and let's also take G to be another uh, Hecke eigenform uh, of uh, level one. So I'm taking it level one for simplicity, but uh, uh, this will be fixed throughout the top, the form G. So it will be fixed. And uh, so, we can, uh, so the, the form G can be Einstein or a mass uh, or, or holomorphic form. And here uh, F also, F could be a mass form or a holomorphic form having a level P. And uh, <coughs> the problem which we want to consider is uh, our goal is to estimate uh, L half F times G, so the central value at one half associated to the rankine silberg F times G. Let's uh, rename it L of F comma G. And uh, we want to get uh, non-trivial estimates for, for the central values. Uh, as uh, p tends to infinity, so for large for large uh, level uh, p. So, uh, so <clears throat> if we, but we know trivially, or maybe due to here yeah, fragment Lindelof, uh, one can show that. Uh, Or, uh, 
analogously by you can also use a functional equation to approximate this uh, L value by, by uh, uh, finite Tisla series lambda f lambda g n divided by square root of n and going up to p p to the one plus epsilon let's say and there will be a dual term which is uh, similar to the first term and uh, here we use uh, the Rankine-Silberg bound uh, which is uh, easily available to us to deduce that that uh, LFG can be bounded by uh, uh, P square. So I have written it uh, in this uh, uh, fancy exponent, but uh, uh, it is essentially P to the one half. And uh, here I have like taken P square just to just to stress that P square is the conductor uh, in this setup. So this is uh, <coughs> uh, called convexity bound. Uh, and uh, so let me just repeat it again. Uh, so P to the, let's say, uh, yeah, one half plus epsilon. And here, uh, let me just define once and all this uh, less less symbol. Uh, uh, I always mean that A is less than B if uh, there is an absolute uh, constant uh, which may depend on the form G as well as epsilon times uh, B. Right. Uh, right. So this is uh, uh, just what follow from. Uh, functional equation and uh, uh, this is a dream uh, follows from uh, generalized Lindelof hypothesis and so if you believe in uh, Heman hypothesis uh, uh, you should believe in this and then uh, things in between uh, are uh, I like talk for a, a topic of discussion for, for several years in centuries. So we want to uh, get a subconvexity bound. What is subconvexity bound? So it will be an exponent uh, better than one half for 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 some delta positive. There has been uh, a lot of progress uh, after, uh, so the, the first uh, breakthrough was by, by Duke Friedlander and UNH. Uh, so let me talk some history of this problem. Uh, DFI, so Duke Friedlander and UNH were, were the first to, to get a in 1994, in a, in a special situation when G uh, is an Einstein series and, uh, and the Leventippus uh, uh, is trivial. And uh, they, uh, they were able to, uh, to get some uh, delta, but that was very tiny. Uh, and then there were uh, uh, subsequent work uh, by, by DFI, uh, where they could uh, uh, take G to be Einstein's time and uh, uh, any uh, any chi primitive. So, <clears throat> so this uh, this thing is known very well if uh, the form uh, G is Einstein's time. And uh, then, in a work by uh, Kowalski, Michel, and Vanderkam uh, in 2002, basically, which was uh, uh, based on the method of DFI, uh, they could uh, extend uh, DFI result to uh, uh, the holomorphic and uh, chi-trivial. Uh, 
uh, and then uh, there were uh, more results by Michel, Michel in 2004, uh, who could uh, uh, handle the case of chi uh, non-trivial, so primitive, and then uh, uh, Michel and Harkos. Michel in uh, 2004, 2006, they 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 obtained a result in in, in kind of a, a more generality where they could take a chi to be primitive and f and g could be holomorphic uh, or mass, uh, but uh, but I think they they were they were not taking uh, chi to be trivial there, but uh, but the, the, this result was quite general. Uh, so let me uh, mention what, uh, what is their exponent. So they could get an exponent of uh, uh, one over fourteen thirteen. So you can see it's uh, uh, it's still uh, not a not a, not a very good saving, but still significant. So it shows that uh, this problem is kind of uh, 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 one of the difficult problem. And I also should mention a result by Michel and Venkatesh. Uh, from uh, 2010, where they, they could uh, uh, get some convexity result for uh, uh, for for this L value in all aspects of the form F. So F uh, now have allowed to uh, vary all the all the parameters. So whether you can uh, vary the spectral parameters or the weight uh, weight or or level in in whatever direction. So. <coughs> All the results, whatever I have mentioned, they uh, they were built uh, upon a moment approach. So, moment uh, method, uh, and uh, so apart from Michel Venker test, which was a period integral approach, but uh, all the other mentioned results, they use uh, moment method, and uh, in particular, spectral theory was crucial used, so GL2 spectral theory. So uh, in this talk, I, I will give uh, kind of uh, another proof where uh, uh, we, we use uh, GL1 theory, or uh, you say GL1 delta method. Uh, I state my result. Sorry? Yeah, in this work, I, I do. Yeah. So, okay. So, LF of G. This is bounded by. So we have an exponent of uh, 1 over uh, 6 or 4. Uh, if, we, uh, well, if we assume a uh, uh, condition on, uh, on this uh, L2 norm of GL2 Hecke eigenvalues, uh, let's say this. So if we assume, let's say this is uh, uh, syntactic to uh, L or bounded blow by L, then uh, we can uh, even uh, improve it further. The first one is uh, unconditional, and the second, can, uh, second one is uh, what, uh, what we should kind of expect. So what, what are we using? Let me make some remarks. So we are using a ZL1 delta method. Uh, 
and she is delta method uh, and uh, we are able to uh, avoid the uh, spectral theory in particular which was uh, used in all the previous works uh, and the uh, key ingredient is uh, uh, estimates for for the bilinear uh, sum not real estimates for the bilinear sum and uh, m uh, E of A and bar over N. Uh, A is some fixed uh, non zero integer. Uh, so we, we, we need to have, uh, we need to implement non trivial estimates for this bilinear form uh, in the range when they are, uh, they are the same size. Uh, are there any questions so far? No, so uh, in DFI, uh, they use some kind of reverse amplification. Really. No, no. It's, yeah, it's, it's a reverse amplification. Maybe I can uh, discuss a proof later on. Sorry? Yeah, so they have further improvement, Chandi. Yeah, so we, yeah, eventually we are using that. Uh, it uh, helps us getting a better bound. And uh, the method is uh, uh, flexible enough to, uh, to consider uh, like uh, all other aspects. Uh, uh, in particular, uh, we also expect that uh, we can also uh, uh, consider like subconvexity at the spatial points, uh, ITF, where the we, we expect a maximal conductor drop. So this, uh, in particular, this problem was uh, was solved by Michel and Venkatesh in their paper. So as a as a result, or one can also uh, vary all possible. Uh, whatever the parameters are involved. But the, the point is we have to fix the form G. So now uh, I will go to the proof. <coughs> so I will give a rough sketch. Sorry? Yeah, you can uh, uh, fix the level or and vary the uh, spectral parameters. That's like a different problem. No, you just take a trivial one. Or you can also vary the level as well, so it doesn't matter. So you can vary like all the parameters. So the let me give you an outline what uh, we are going to see in the next uh, 20 25 minutes. The first step is approximate functional equation, which is kind of the starting point, uh, which helps us to, to reduce the problem of estimating these L values in terms of uh, exponential sum. So, something like this. Sending over. A and B N, and then uh, introduced to to get estimates for for these uh, exponential sums, and uh, then we use uh, delta method. Uh, so we have to uh, also use uh, amplification, but that is. Uh, kind of uh, necessary to, to treat some diagonal cases. Uh, and uh, so with the help of the delta method, we, the main task is to uh, separate the variables, like uh, a n and b n, you, you have seen uh, last week and in some of the talks. And then 
comes the process of uh, uh, dualization, uh, where in our problem we have to kind of apply Voronoi two times, so to uh, to the variable, to the new variables, uh, and uh, let's uh, combine them back to see to see what what happens. Uh, uh, we have to apply Cauchy, uh, and then uh, so maybe this diagonal. I will uh, this diagram. So like Cauchy, Cauchy, Cauchy step, uh, uh, which is followed by Poisson step, uh, and then uh, it uh, it uh, requires to to deal uh, with the case where. Uh, we have zero frequencies and uh, non-zero frequencies. Uh, and uh, so usually in the delta approach, uh, most of the time we are uh, uh, happy and we get the results up to this stage. So if we uh, 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 want to get something new, maybe the hope is to, to analyze from this step onwards, the non-zero frequency thing. And uh, that's where we kind of uh, have to use the DFI bilinear sum estimate. So we get to the structure uh, of this bilinear form of cluster one fractions, and we are able to use, use that expression. And uh, <coughs> that's, the, that's the outline. I will be now uh, explaining the steps. Let's uh, start uh, explaining uh, step one. Uh, this is an uh, approximate functional equation. It's, uh, it's a standard. So we can uh, uh, upper bound uh, these L values. N, S, N, square root N, and uh, N can go up to P, to the epsilon, right, where uh, S, N is uh, exponential sums involving uh, the eigenvalues, then the F, N, lambda, C, N, uh, and the uh, and a smooth function, innocent uh, smooth function, which is uh, uh, which makes uh, our life and is better. So W is a uh, infinity of one of two, uh, and the derivatives are bounded to be J. So from now on, uh, uh, I will uh, suppress uh, these weight functions because they they are just only uh, here to to make our life easy, and uh, they do not uh, uh, make things challenging. Okay, so <coughs> what is the trivial bound here? So if we use the trivial bound, which is uh, uh, Sn is bounded by n using the rankin selberg bound. Uh, we we recover convexity. Uh, we we get that L of this is bounded by p to the one half to the delta. So this tells us that if we want to uh, improve upon uh, upon the exponent one half, uh, we should uh, get non-trivial cancellations in the sum Sn. So now our goal is to to get uh, to show how to get uh, non trivial cancellation in the sum sn by 
to the power 1 plus 1 delta 1 at the same delta, okay. Right, and uh, we consider the, the most uh, uh, difficult range, which is uh, when n is of size p. Uh, so we have uh, now moved to, we now move to the step two, uh, which is uh, uh, applying the delta method. And uh, let's set it up. So we uh, write the sum Sn differently and the Fn and the Gn uh, as uh, a double sum, sum of N and M, and the Fn and the Gn delta of N minus N. Uh, and then the idea is to to use a, a Fourier expansion of the delta symbol to, to, to get some cancellations and use some harmonic analysis, we do that. So here, well, this is not exactly true what we are doing in our theorem, so I have kind of uh, uh, hide uh, the amplification step, but uh, I will be explaining later that uh, that why amplification, so it's the, the role of amplification is to treat the diagonal case later on. Uh, <coughs> so uh, it's not, uh, so I just for the exposition to clear, to, to express the ideas, uh, let's just focus on, on this case. Okay. And uh, now we uh, will to uh, DFI expansion of this uh, delta symbol, uh, which is uh, uh, one by Q uh, summing over small Q going up to Q, one over Q, summing over A modulo Q primitives, E of A, N minus M over Q and uh, an integral transform which, uh, uh, which is harmless uh, in, in generic cases. So you, you can assume that it doesn't exist uh, for, for the rest of the talk. And here we, uh, we take uh, Q to be, capital Q to be square root of uh, N, so which will be like a square root P. So uh, let's plug uh, that, that in, this expression, and see what uh, we get. So we get, so I, I will be now forgetting this integral transform because they, uh, they are harmless. So we get summing over Q, one by Q, A mod Q star, S, F of A Q, and uh, that's the G of AQ. And uh, uh, what are these uh, SF and SG? So SF uh, is the sum involving only the GL, uh, only the, the lambda F, uh, Fn eigenvalues. Uh, so it's uh, G of A M by Q. And uh, Similarly, SG is uh, summing over M, summing over N, and the G of N, G of minus A by Q. Uh, right. So we have, uh, so as you see, we have separated uh, the oscillations lambda Fn from lambda G, and uh, but uh, what, what we have lost here is uh, if you see the Trivial bound at this stage. So, trivial bound means this is bounded by capital N. So, let me write this. So, this is bound by N, this is bound by N. So, now the trivial bound here is N square. 
So we had started with something which uh, was bounded by n, but now it's bounded by n square. But uh, of course, we have uh, now separated the variables, uh, so we hope to, to gain this, uh, and this, uh, this losing factor n and something more. So recall that we wanted to show something like this. Yeah, I, I'm not, sorry? So, uh, so I have written something like this. So, <laughs> it, they, they are uh, smooth. Uh, because, uh, yeah, one can just uh, keep it and so it, is, it doesn't matter. So now we move to the step three, uh, which is, uh, Dualization. Dualization. So here, in the sum SF and SG, we are in a position to uh, to apply uh, uh, our estimation formula. So, so SF, if we apply Voronoi, uh, we get uh, something like this. Q. Uh, so let me not write it right now. Then the Fn e of uh, minus a p bar m by q. Right, and uh, so there will be some integral transform. So and then integral by parts, integration by parts to this will uh, restrict this uh, dual lens to to p. So. <coughs> Uh, so starting, so you see this length was still uh, p, but the dual length is still p. So we haven't uh, gained anything, and but now we have lost anything. But uh, we have some structural gain here, uh, which will be visible later. Similarly, we apply Voronoi to the uh, S, SG sum. So Voronoi here and Voronoi here. So n by g. And lambda g n e of a bar n over q. And uh, now here the dual length will be of size one. So you can count, you can calculate it uh, via, via conductor. So the conductor here is q squared. So q squared by by the initial length, which is one here. So i is. Uh, Integration g q x e of uh, uh, x n minus m by q q. So these these variables are separated already. So it's like uh, it's already a Fourier transform. Yeah. So should I write bigger? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so now uh, you see the first step seems uh, like at this moment a bit uh, useless because we haven't uh, uh, gained anything here. Although in the second step, it's uh, it's like a lot of saving. So from length uh, n, uh, we have gone to length essentially one. But uh, together, uh, we, we, gain, we gain something. So let's uh, uh, combine uh, and then see what, uh, what is the expression we are getting for Sn. So the Sn is now. Uh, n by, it will be, so you just put in all those uh, coefficients, uh, all those constants outside, and uh, n will be of size p, lambda of fn, summing over q, psi of minus q, summing over n, size 1. Let me write just lambda n for this, and uh, cq of. M minus n. So this is a CQ of M minus n is the 
Ramanujan sum. So, so CQ of uh, A is summing over alpha modulo Q E of A alpha by Q. Right. So, <clears throat> and now if you see where we are, uh, we can either evaluate the Ramanujan sum, which means that, uh, so this Ramanujan sum essentially gives us a congruence. So ideally we should save like whole Q. And then if we assume that saving of whole Q, we will be at the boundary here. So, so now the trivial bound is uh, assuming like the full uh, saving in the Ramanujan sum. So, but uh, evaluating the full Ramanujan sum kind of, uh, uh, of course, this is giving us more saving, but uh, on the other hand, it is uh, making things difficult because we don't have uh, more legitimate move. Right? So either we have to solve the shifted convolution sum, but that's kind of uh, becomes very delicate uh, if we kind of evaluate the Ramanujan sum. So instead, uh, we choose, a, uh, we just keep the Ramanujan sum as it is, and then, uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, so here, I think, yeah. Yeah, there should be a P. Uh, so, <coughs> so we keep the Ramanujan sum as it is and proceed to apply Cauchy and Poisson summation. So, and the cost of that, uh, keeping the Ramanujan sum as it is will be that uh, we will only be able to get square root cancellation in the Ramanujan sum. In the, after the Poisson when you evaluate this. So we take that loss, which means that, uh, so we only assume now square root cancellation in this, which uh, we get after Poisson summation step. Uh, so now we have something like this. So if you assume only the square root cancellation in this sum. And uh, so in the, so now we move to the next step, which is, uh, uh, so what is this step? Step four. So Cauchy, C A Cauchy plus Poisson. <coughs> so let's uh, consider S N square. Uh, so by applying Cauchy to the variable M, uh, we see that. This Sn is bounded by summing over m, summing over q, chi of q, summing over n, lambda of n, cq of pn minus m. Okay, and uh, so here we kind of assume that m and p are co prime because otherwise uh, uh, we save enough in the uh, M length. So this is the generic case. And let's uh, open uh, the square here and uh, apply Poisson summation to the to the uh, M variable. So. Uh, we open the absolute square, we get some uh, over Q1, Q2, uh, chi of Q1, Q2 bar, summing of N1, N2, then lambda of N1, lambda of N2 bar, and uh, summing over M, and this CQ1, Pn1 minus M, Q2, Pn2 minus M. And now we focus on this M part where we want to apply Poisson summation formula. So when we dualize it by, by Poisson summation, uh, we, we should get like two contribution, one corresponding to the zero frequency and another corresponding to non-zero frequency. So <coughs> I'm just writing here now what you get in the zero frequency. So in the zero frequency, 
we will get something like P uh, Q1 delta of Q1 equals Q2 uh, and times delta of Q1 divides P and 1 minus N2. So, so like, uh, so the one diagonal is when n1 equals to n2 and q1 equals to q2. So if n1 equals to n2, uh, and uh, now you plug this, uh, 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 this estimates, we will be on the boundary here. So, so this is the case when, when, uh, uh, so let me write something go m uh, times the dual, dualize some, and uh, so this case is when m equals zero. So in the case when uh, m is zero, we will be on the boundary. And uh, in the non-zero frequency case, so let's look at the case m is uh, not equals to zero. Uh, and uh, then uh, we evaluate the, the resulting character sum. Uh, we arrive at summing over m. So now you see uh, what is the what is the length after applying Poisson summation. So it will be Q1, Q2 divided by the the length which was p. So it has uh, reduced to one, which means that uh, we have saved here already Q. So in the Poisson summation step, uh, in the non-zero frequency, we are on the boundary. So I, I think I have written it. So here we needed to kind of say root Q but we are taking a square here, which means that uh, uh, we need to save at least Q and a little bit more. So, <coughs> so diagonal, uh, I, I'm not uh, bothered about diagonal here, but in the non-diagonal case, non-zero frequency case, uh, we arrive at this expression. So summing over M, uh, so I'm also writing sum over Q1, Q2, uh, chi of uh, Q1, chi of Q2 bar, uh, and uh, so I'm writing the resulting evaluation of the uh, the dual uh, character sum, which will be n m1 e uh, Q2 bar by Q1 times e of uh, m n to p q1 bar by q2. So all the other lengths are, are one, because this was one, this is one. So we are only left, uh, uh, so let's just focus on, on this expression. Sum over q1, q2, involving these uh, characters and this exponential sum. So here uh, we apply uh, reciprocity, additive reciprocity to so we, if you apply additive reciprocity, so these two factor combined gives uh, E of uh, Q2 bar M P N1 minus N2 by Q1. Sum over Q1, sum over Q2, chi of Q1, chi of Q2 bar. And uh, this is uh, now uh, a bilinear sum with plus common fraction. So sum over Q1, Q2, Q2 bar by Q1, and some, some integer. So uh, if you use uh, an estimate, something like, let's say Q to the power one minus, uh, so, so, they, they are, so the trivial bound is Q square. Uh, DFI, I think they, they have the saving of one over 48. So what we have shown here is that now, so in the non-zero frequency case uh, of the Poisson summation, uh, we have achieved subconvexity. But uh, again, this case of uh, diagonal uh, remains to be solved, which means that uh, now if you apply, you start by applying amplification variable in the very beginning, uh, so diagonal, diagonal seems good. I think uh, I'll stop. Thank you for a nice talk. Are there any questions?
you will nibble the best so you end up with the last sum once right coefficient yeah that. so if so, uh, we had like trivial nibble the best yeah. then we could save even more so you don't uh, because now you can apply here suppose this were one so you can apply portion summation in q2 variable and then further apply maybe quiznes so some of plus term and some you will get so you uh, you get even a better saving so with so, trivial any level also it's fine no need to take uh, nibble the best so yeah so you can take any nibble the best so it it doesn't require to be trivial or no. but the, no the point i'm saying is that if you take trivial nibble the best you 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 even get a better bounds oh. right because they are like now a nice smooth sum so these are kind of the hindrance factor for us because they have large conductor if you and, and uh, uh, what uh, dfi are doing is uh, they they are essentially uh, they have essentially arbitrary coefficients so uh, the, the the real that we are using is for like arbitrary coefficients but it doesn't matter much because uh, in our case uh, maybe with this uh, special coefficients maybe one can do do more i don't know any other question okay so um this uh, uh, DFI uh, uh, lot sieve that you apply at the end. What was the original motivation for this? Like, why? What was? What were DFI doing? This one. Uh, uh, well, they. Uh, I don't know. So, in they have a separate paper where they kind of uh, uh, get non trivial estimate for this, and even it is uh, very proud of this result. <laughs> yeah, but what was he using it for? Like, so this was used uh, uh, by by Munshi also in a twist aspect result. So, for example, uh, this is also helpful to get subconvexity uh, for 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 this F twist by uh, by uh, GL one, but there might be other application. Yeah. So yeah. So there. Uh, okay. 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 So it's okay in their final paper. Any more questions, comments? Maybe I can ask something. Can this be generalized to some uh, other setting than the one you mentioned, your technique? Uh, other settings, uh, uh, what uh, one could consider? So maybe the, the point here is that here we are Surprisingly, able to use the the most, uh, I mean, uh, just the, just the usual expression of DFI. Usually, in the delta symbol approach, we either have to uh, do some tricks like conductor lowering here and there. But here, it, it just turns out like just a standard application of a delta delta method uh, works out here. But in uh, other problem, uh, I don't know. Okay. Uh... If there are no questions, let's thank the speaker again.